All right, everyone, it looks like for some time I'm going to have to talk about Hydrogen Hillary every single day because she keeps saying dumb things every single day. This time she's coming out. She's calling Trump's UN speech dark and dangerous. Oh, he's uh, bullying the DPRK. He's being too mean to the North Koreans. This sounds like warmongering. This is the same Hillary Clinton during the campaign. I don't know if she forgot this, like she's got early onset dementia or something like that. This is the same Hillary Clinton, you'll remember, who came out and said, Oh, Trump is too soft on North Korea. I would do things so much better. I would lay down the law on these people. That's what Trump is currently doing. He's trying to get the UN to do it. I don't think he'll be successful. If he is, he'll be like the master of all reality forever. Getting the UN to do something? Wow. Uh, that's something that hasn't been accomplished in a good long time. Ronnie Reagan had enough problems with the UN, let alone... Uh, somebody who even the legacy media here won't bother to support. Clinton says, oh, I would be harsh on the North Koreans. Well, harsh, in other words, he'd probably do nothing more than Trump has already done and then some less. Clinton would have slapped some more sanctions and embargoes on them, pulled an Obama, kicked the can further, ultimately sent strongly worded letters to them saying, oh, well, we protest this when they did a hydrogen bomb test. Trump is saying, well, we might be forced to destroy North Korea. Now, look at what he's actually saying, and you can read into it a different layer of what he means than what most people are taking this as. If you look at what Trump said, what he appears to be saying to those who don't like him, who assume that he's crazy, is, well, we're going to haul off and drop nuclear weapons on North Korea, and we're warning the UN beforehand, hey, we intend to do this. What I see him as saying is saying, hey, UN, you're dragging your heels. You're ineffective. Uh, I don't like the UN, essentially. And he campaigned on this, trying to reform the UN. He's actually attempting to do this. But if you don't get involved, at some point, North Korea is going to do something that forces us to attack them. And we don't want that to happen. We want the UN to get involved, hopefully collapse the regime before war happens. That's what he's hoping for. That's not warmongering. In fact, if he can get that accomplished, we can save basically everyone in North Korea. I just, I'm just not optimistic that it will work because I'm not optimistic that the UN is capable of doing jack shit in regards to North Korea. They can't even get, they can't even stabilize a situation like Rwanda where the, those that are actually committing violence, they're doing so largely with machetes and, and ball bats, things like that. They can't even stabilize that situation. They basically are forced to flee. They can't stabilize Darfur when it's a handful of the tens of thousands of uh, Islamic guerrilla fighters wandering around the Janjaweeds, killing people at a whim for ethnic and racial and, and tribal reasons. They can't do shit about that. What are they supposed to do about a state with nuclear weapons? And these aren't your grandma's atomic bombs. These aren't, well, five or six of these and Seoul is gone. These are hydrogen bombs now that we're dealing with. Something five times larger at least, possibly 10. We're talking about 50 to 100 kiloton weapons. It's on par with what Pakistan and India field on a rainy day. Do you actually think that the bureaucrats, the glorified paper pushers at the UN, have the balls to deal with such a situation? I don't think so. If Trump does manage to kick their ass into high gear, uh, he'll have done something really, really good for the world. I just don't think it'll work. And in that case, if we have to go to war, would that be not be the ultimate show of, of you know, uh, being tough on North Korea? Trump seems willing. Would Hillary Clinton have been willing? I don't think so. I think Hillary Clinton is one of those people that talks a big game and ultimately does nothing, even on Iran. One of the main reasons that I did not vote for Hillary Clinton was her statement from the last election on Iran when she was running against Obama and ended up, you know, obviously not being the candidate. She said, well, if I'm elected, uh, you know, and Iran keeps up its nuclear program, I will strike Iran. And some people tried to tell me that that was out of context. It's not. It's in the context of if they continue, which they obviously are, they obviously will, if, especially if you're aggressive towards a country you got to understand that they're going to try to seek the weapons to deflect your aggression. You have to understand that, right? That's how uh, countries tend to work. Iran doesn't want to get bombed back to the Stone Age and not even be able to defend itself. Say that they're evil or crazy all you want. Fundamentally, it's about they think, well, we need to defend our country. You know, the, the regime there 
at the time of course much more abusive than now the liberals control that country now they're not liberal by western standards but they're they're a kinder gentler face of iranian domestic and foreign policy it's better than what they had before uh, much more tolerable, much more open to diplomatically working with the West. One thing uh, Trump's doing that I actually uh, oppose here is trying to dickwag after the Iranians. Focus on Korea. Focus on Korea and see if there's something you can do to stabilize Venezuela and get rid of Maduro without actually having to declare war on the country. Those are your main concerns. Ignore Iran. They're not going to build a nuke. They know that if they had even a primitive atomic weapon, they wouldn't be able to pull a North Korea and say, aha, now no one will attack us. It wouldn't happen. The Israelis would get involved right away. We would end up getting dragged into it just because we've got a, a military alliance with Israel. In that case, they would take unilateral action. We might even have to condemn Israel for their actions if they do such a thing. And they'll say, screw off. We don't care what you think. We've got nukes too. And we're going to use them. There's nothing anyone in the region is going to do. They're not going to invade a nuclear power a nation with at least a couple hundred fairly sophisticated thermonuclear weapons. Yeah, it'd be a great idea to haul off and try to attack the Israelis. That's one thing. We've got a thorn in our side on that. It's like with China. China, I think, ultimately is worried that if it's too harsh on North Korea, that they're the ones that get, uh, get the nuclear bullet. It would be the same as uh, maybe uh, the, the Euro states uh, saying, well, we're going to go tough on Israel, and not just condemn them, we're going to start sanctioning them and screw the U.S. Uh, it wouldn't be good for business, I think, because the, the, it might cause a nuclear war, especially since none of its neighbors have nuclear weapons. be uh, quite draconian, uh, quite, quite a lot of butchery. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dead bodies laying out in the desert. Uh, and there's some people, oddly enough, who would think that this was a laudable situation to be in. Yeah, we caused a nuclear winter, but people died, and, and for some reason that's a good thing. With North Korea, it's similar. The Chinese are kind of uh, uh, hamstrung on the issue because they can't go too harsh because then they become a target. If they know, I think that they know that if they waffle around diplomatically and let the West eventually take care of it, they probably get spared getting hit by a hydrogen bomb. At this point, there's even more reason for them to do that. The fact that the Chinese have joined in the condemnation now twice is to Trump's immense advantage on the world stage of diplomacy. Calling Kim Jong-un rocket man, Scott Adams pointed this out. It's a linguistic kill shot, as he would term it. I would simply say, hey, it's a way to make sure that Kim Jong-un's not taken seriously. It's like any remnant of taking him seriously goes by the wayside when people begin likening him to a, what is it, 70s era Elton John song. It just uh, goes the way of the dinosaur. And good. He doesn't need to be taken seriously. You need to take the threat seriously. You can't consider him an irrational actor because he's obviously not. He's obviously rational. The problem is that with continued provocation, if they get any worse or continue even at their current level, war will begin on the Korean Peninsula. It's not like... North Korea hasn't been acting normal in the traditional sense now for years. The last time we had problems with North Korea, when I weighed in on it, this was years ago after their last round of tests i think was it 2015 or early 2016 the way that they were acting towards south korea japan and even china was not normal it was no longer the same game that they were playing and i said at the time i did not expect war to break out at any given moment because of any given provocation but the likelihood was higher and it had become in the long span inevitable war will begin I hold to that, and I think that it's gotten worse in the last year. Some people would like to blame that on Trump. Here you have candidate Hillary Clinton says, Ooh, he's soft on North Korea. He, he wouldn't be willing to bomb them out of existence, but I would. Ha, 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 I'm hydrogen Hillary. Yes, Hillary, we know you would love to press the little red button because it would give you an immense power hard on because you're so egotistical. Now, Trump's egotistical too. He has a different idea of how to fulfill it, though. If you look at Clinton's life, how does she fulfill her ego? Stabbing people in the back and destroying things. How does Trump fulfill his ego? Oh, my brand is really, really great. I built like the best skyscraper ever. He's a constructive egotist. That's why I have more hope for him in leading this country in an executive capacity. He is a constructive individual. He sees it as a glorious thing to build something to feed his ego, to build something everyone will see when they drive past on their way to work that people will aspire to. Hillary Clinton's not interested in constructing anything. Her idea of a solution is, oh, I bombed a bunch of people. She's like Obama or Bush on that token. 
Trump has shown immense restraint there. I uh, probably, if W had been president, he probably already would have readied the bombers, so to speak, if uh, North Korea had tested a hydrogen bomb. There wouldn't be an attempt at diplomacy. There wouldn't be a last ditch effort to say, hey, UN, why don't you get involved unless you want, you know, us to do what we did with Saddam and just act in a preemptive fashion, invoke NATO, and uh, UN, you can sit on the sidelines as always because you never accomplish anything. Trump campaigned on either scrapping our membership in or severely reforming the UN, attempting to get the situation to work again. Or I should say maybe work for the first time. That was part of his campaign. Is that not what he's doing? Is this not what we elected him to do to hardline the UN and say, look, your approach doesn't work. You're incapable of solving this or any other problem around the world. You can't even solve problems within uh, UN happy EU nations with borders or, or migration or anything. You can't do anything. Nobody respects you. Nobody gives a damn. One country decides to veto some plan that makes total sense for diplomatic or economic reasons, usually China, and you just sit down and say, oh, well, I guess that plan was defeated. This is what we elected Trump to do. It's good that he's going hardline after the UN. Hillary Clinton has the gall to say, oh, well, it's dark and dangerous. It's dangerous to uh, threaten the North Koreans. Like, that's not what they do to their neighbors on a daily basis now. They've been doing it for months. They've done it more sporadically in years past anyway, but for decades they've threatened the South Koreans. Then they added Japan to that mix. Then they kind of added China to that mix. Now, of course, the U.S. is supposedly going to turn into a lake of fire. They may not have the ability to do that. Do you want to sit by while they develop a countermeasure against U.S. Uh, military supremacy to the point at which they can say, oh, well, we can invade South Korea now because if the United States gets involved, we can, uh, I don't know, kill 100 million people. That's what'll happen. That's their stated goal. You can look at North Korea's own state media. Oh yeah, we're go pretty soon the US will have to back down. We're gonna spank them like a dirty dog. And then we're gonna reunify on our own terms. And soon the whole world will be juche. That's essentially what they want. It's not like in the past, people need to understand that there's a little bit of a difference between the way North Korea is doing business and the way like Saddam or, or Gaddafi did. Saddam and Gaddafi and all these others, they would come out on state media and say, oh, well, we're so strong, we're like invincible, no one will mess with us. But they never said, they never stated the goal, yes, we will invade our neighbors and be imperialistic and take their land and subjugate them to our way of life. They never said that. Those were illegitimate wars. We never should have been in Iraq. We never should have run a no-fly zone over Libya. We never should have... Uh, dicked around in Syria. We shouldn't be involved in arming the Saudis against the, the Houthi rebels. We shouldn't be involved in any of these nations. Only if we are directly asked, and then only if it's in our economic benefit, should we get involved in these nations. But with North Korea, they've already given us a cause to attack. We would be well within our rights if, if the Japanese were, uh, were inclined to. They would be within their rights to immediately invade. So would the South Koreans, at this point, almost the Chinese too. They've uh, taken some flack too from the North Korean regime. The North Koreans are no longer warm to China. They're almost buddy-buddying now with Russia. Trust me, you don't want to wait until Russia sees it as uh, in its benefit to start buying minerals from them. You don't want to wait to see that happen. You'd much rather deal with the Chinese than the Russians. The Chinese are far less likely to get involved on behalf of a you know, relatively backwards ally, so-called, that will still uh, make unkind comments about their entire culture. You'd much rather deal with the Chinese on this issue, and if the UN doesn't take action, and I suspect that it won't, Trump's not gonna have a choice. It'll probably come to a head in the next few years. That's the timeline we're now looking at. It's not, it's not an Iran situation where as soon as the, I think it was 1994, Netanyahu or, or whoever it was first comes out and says, oh, Iran's trying to get a nuke. They'll have it within years. Now, several decades later, they still don't have any nuclear weapons. They barely have a functioning nuclear program. The Israelis bombed it several times. Or was that Syria? No, it was Syria that they bombed uh, several reactor sites. They still don't have it. So that means that they're far, far behind North Korea. North Korea, meanwhile, brags about every test, brags about having more weapons than they probably do, bragged about having a hydrogen bomb probably a good year before they did. Now they actually have one. They at least have the technology to make one, if not to make multiple uh, hydrogen bombs. We're not exactly sure. And the Pentagon, 
also is apparently full of shit using a strat I think it was a strat for study they said oh yeah well we, we they have a lot more uh, nuclear material than we thought like they probably got 70 80 uh, atomic bombs but it doesn't appear that they're manufacturing the necessary prerequisites for a hydrogen bomb so don't worry too much well then what did they test was it like that they blew up five or six atomic bombs at the same time that's probably even more worrisome what are we supposed to do about this hydrogen Hillary will sit there from the peanut gallery ultimately because she's not in politics it's dark and dangerous oh no 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 don't you actually you know you know, we we've said for decades including her husband Bill Clinton North Korea is a problem North Korea transgresses all norms North Korea breaks international laws though that means anything if you got the power to break it you can you can do so to whim North Korea is abusive North Korea is evil North Korea wants to kill everybody They've said this for a long, long time. Then when action is finally taken, something more tangible than, okay, half-assed sanction time, then all of a sudden it's dark and dangerous. Oh, it could lead to World War III. It's so evil. Oh, you're talking about genocide. It's not, we're not talking about genocide. You actually think, does anybody here, uh, let's do an informal poll. You can say in the comments. Does anybody here actually think that unless North Korea had already deployed at least an atomic weapon on one of its neighbors that we would deploy any sort of nuclear reprisal on North Korea I say the answer is no it's a breach of our own nuclear doctrine they're not a state that has a substantial nuclear deterrent at least towards us if not towards South Korea and Japan it would require a grave extenuating circumstances for the United States to deploy a nuclear weapon simply on behalf of an ally that had been attacked and if it's conventional weapons, I give a 0% chance that we would respond with nukes. No, we would respond with mother of all bombs and tomahawk missiles and all the other goodies in our arsenal that are perfectly acceptable for taking out an enemy like North Korea. We're talking about a state <clears throat> whose military power ultimately is bolstered more by massive reserves of partisans that may or may not even take up arms when the fighting begins. That's essentially their power. That and now they have hydrogen bombs begins to look a lot less substantial when you consider that some of that artillery on the DMZ might ultimately be for show. Some of those pieces may not even fire. How do we know that they do? They're from the 50s and 60s. Are we sure that they're all properly maintained and that some of that's not fake weaponry that can't even fire? Like there are no mechanisms inside to fire it. It's just an empty, uh, an empty artillery piece that's sitting there on a rail track just for show to intimidate the South Koreans. What happens if war begins and we find out, oh, most of that artillery couldn't even fire? Seoul is saved. Well, then we're definitely not going to deploy nuclear weapons against them. There'd be no threat. They would fall in days. South Korea and Japan combined uh, would be more than a match for North Korea, even with its atomic program. With us involved in the naval and air sense, without any troops on the ground whatsoever, yeah, I mean, it would be totally one-sided. It would be totally one thing. It would, it would crack way, way quicker than shock and awe got Saddam's troops to flee. It'd be way quicker than that. But hopefully Hydrogen Hillary can uh, be quiet for a while. You know, do what she would have expected Trump to do. If Trump had been complaining about the election result and saying, oh, Hydrogen Hillary, so a crooked Hillary, she's such a liar, ha, ah, she's so evil and ineffective and inept. Yeah, Hillary Clinton would have come out and said, oh, well, that's just sour grapes. You're just a sore loser and you need to shut the fuck up. That's what she would have said and her fans would have cheered wildly if she had done that, if she had won the election. Because Trump probably would have complained afterwards. You know, let's be honest, he probably would have too. But nobody's saying that to Hillary Clinton other than a handful of uh, very worried neoliberals who are saying, well, she's so unpopular and she keeps putting herself back in the limelight so that her remaining fans will love her and adore her and dote on her and buy her book, of course, as well. Uh, and so we're getting worried about the midterms, like how is this going to affect us? She's going to be kind of the face of our party at that point still, and the face of our party is, is clearly demented. I find that part uh, hilarious, but I don't think that she's going to sit down and be quiet like she would expect any male political figure to do had she won. That's about all. Peace out.